that God is not a Sunday event, or even a Sunday Wednesday event, or a Sunday Monday Tuesday Wednesday event. He's not a seven day a week event. He's everything. Yes. That you're so in love with this God that you cannot stand to be away from Him. You don't want to be away from Him. You you can't wait to be with Him, to just be in His presence. Just to fellowship with this God. Just to be in the same room with God. Dennis shares something when he's mentioned about marriage. Sometimes when you're with somebody you love, you don't have to be doing anything together. You just, it's just, isn't it nice just to be in the same room? Peacefully enjoying each other's fellowship. You know, it doesn't have to be an event all the time. It's just that there's a relationship that exists. And in the back of your heart, you know that they're always there. And that's what God wants. And it so reminds me of like a young woman, for those of you who aren't anymore. <laughs> remember back, ladies, when you first fell in love, gentlemen. Remember way back, when you first fell in love with that beautiful bride, before she was your bride, or anybody who's had a crush. Ooh, okay, that should include just about everybody. Having that crush, so you have a young man or a young woman who's, who's found an object of their affection and has set their heart and set their gaze and set their everything on this individual. So consumed, I remember, I was like, well, you're so consumed with the very thought of that person that you can't, you can't hardly eat. You can't sleep. Because you know, all you're doing is what? Think about that person. Do you remember working your whole schedule around so that you could see them whenever they could see you? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. It was like, oh, man. It's like, well, generally I have to work Wednesday nights, but you don't. Okay, well, let me see what I can do. <laughs> you know, you work out the Wednesday thing, and then it's like, oh, uh, well, maybe I don't have to pay my bills. I can quit my job entirely just so I can be with you. <laughs> <laughs> You know, where you're just consumed. You know, you can't stay off the phone, right? Oh, well, thanks for calling. So nice to talk. Yeah, yeah I know. I right? yeah, me too. Oh, um, well, okay. I'll see. Well, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, okay. Bye. What? Well, well, hold on a second. But, yeah, I'm not saying bye. You say bye. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to say bye either, do you? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, can, can, I, can you call me back? <laughs> when? Now? 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 <laughs> right, I'll hang up and call you. Hello? <laughs> you can't wait. You just look for it. You know, it's just, it's stupid. You just get stupid brain. You know, it's like any, you could be like the most intelligent person on the planet, 17 CDs, CDs and PhDs, I've been in CDs uh, about 15 PhD, and be really smart, and what happens? It's like, you know, you're over, 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 you goofy. You just, you get goofy. So, now, think about that kind of intense love, and what happens when you, you know, right, you know, you've got them in your sights, and you're just so in love with that person, and then they say goodbye before you do. <gasps> right? They go, okay, honey, lost. Okay, goodbye. Well, right? And then you leave a message, and it's like, you know, you leave them a message because it's the end of the day. <laughs> they don't call back. What, what's happening? What's happening? It must be a mistake. So you, you know what I mean? You call back. You leave another one. Next thing you know, it's like, Bee. I'm sorry, there is no more space on this recording. <laughs> and, and they're not calling you back quite as fast. And then they stop calling you back all together. And that, that special time where you met every Wednesday for coffee at 5 o'clock, right? You're sitting there at Starbucks. And you're sitting there. And you're still sitting there, and they don't show up. They totally blew you off. What does that do to your life? Great. 
crazy. I mean, you just, you, you can't imagine. You just, they must be sick, right? They must be sick. How could they possibly, do I, did I miss the time chain? You know what I mean? You, you think, well, something must have happened. Maybe they got run over by a milk truck. I hope they got run over by a milk truck. <laughs> Very large milk truck. <laughs> because you can't imagine why they wouldn't be here otherwise, right? And then the unthinkable happens. You're looking out the Starbucks window, and who do you see? Them. That special someone. And guess what? They're not with you. They're with somebody else. It just kills you. It slays you. It just... I mean, it's just... That's just so horrible. It's so horrible. You know? The jealousy that that brings about in a person's heart. That jealousy gives rise to an anger because of betrayal, an anger that your heart has been betrayed and that no matter how much love and how much care you had given that person, that they were unappreciative and faithless. Faithless. Unfaithful person. God Deuteronomy says, For the Lord your God is a consuming fire. A what? <laughs> for you shall not worship another God, for the Lord, whose name is what? Just. Is what kind of God? Just. God calls himself what? That's a name that he uses to communicate to the people he loves part of his character. Isn't that amazing? God says, you want to get to know me? Here's what I am. Here's one of the words you could use to describe me. Jealous. Jealous. It's like, you know, here's words to describe Pam. Uh, that's what I can't say here. <laughs> you know, it's like musical. Okay, that, you know, I like people. I would like people. Uh, I'm dependable, that's sweet. Um, the overweight. Uh, you know, it's like lazy. Uh, you know, I mean, there's a lot of things that describe me. That, you know, that's just who I am. And God says, you want to know me? There. One of my names. My name is Jealous. Whoa. Jealous? Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, let me define it for you. <clears throat> Jealousy means intolerant of rivalry and unfaithfulness. Intolerant. You know what it means? He don't put up with it. He can't stand it, and he doesn't put up with it. God is intolerant of rivalry. Isn't that great? Right? I think that's such a great definition of God. God is intolerant of rivalry. And then the second definition is similar. It means to be vigilant in guarding a possession. You could say a dog is jealously guarding his bone. What does that look like? <laughs> right? You know, it's like, you know, he's got it, man. <laughs> closer you get, what happens? The more intense he is on the focus of his love and affection. Okay? Because he ain't letting you steal what is his object of love and affection. You ain't getting near his bone. Amen? Okay. The closer you get, the more guarded he's going to become. Now, Jealousy is God. God is not tolerant of rivals, others seeking the attention of those he loves. And he is also 
very jealous in how he guards that which is his. Make sense? Understand that? What a beautiful verse where God takes a human emotion called jealousy. Is there anybody here who understands jealousy? Have you ever felt jealousy? You ever been jealous? It's all consuming, isn't it? I mean, if you really, you know, if you've ever really been jealous, it's like all consuming. It's all you can think of. You know, like, I mean, in, in a bad sense. You know, I mean, you know, because man thinks that something that's even meant for good turns it around to be wacky and weird and, and destructive, un, um, ungodly. You know, where jealousy becomes um, wicked and evil. But where, you know, it, it's, it's so over the top. Most jealousy, by the way, is prone from uh, insecurity on the part of the individual who is jealous. God doesn't have that problem. Okay? God, that is not a problem that God has. God is not insecure. God is very secure. What he is, though, is very vigilant in guarding his position. If you are his, he's like that bone. It's like, you know, this is you're my bone. <laughs> this is my bone. You ain't coming near him. And the closer you get to him, the more vigilant I'm going to get. I'm going to surround him. I'm going to make sure. I'm going to check it. You know, I'm not just. I'm not going to fall asleep and give you the chance to get to his hand because he's mine. Okay, that's what God says in Charlie. Charlie's mine too. In, in Mark, and God is not going to. He's so vigilant. He never sleeps to make sure nobody gets to his possession. That's a good God, isn't it? Yes. Now, here I am guarding Chris. And Chris does the unthinkable. He leaves. He gets up and he runs away. I cannot guard him. If that's his choice. You follow me? God doesn't chase people. God loves people. And says, out of my love and all that I have done for you, I'm asking you to come home. I'm asking you to be with me throughout how long? God's nature is jealousy towards his people. He is unwilling to share, does not share well with others. That's on God's resume. I'm God, I'm jealous, I don't share well with others. Because he doesn't have to. He is love, and he so loves his people that he has withheld nothing good from them. Amen? He has given us absolutely everything, and he asks for only one thing in return, and that's love back. A faithful love, though. Not just a, mm, yeah, I'll hit you back next time, God. No, no, no. A faithful love. Love, uh, the same kind of consuming commitment that God makes to you, that's what he wants back. Does that make sense? Think about yourself. That young gal who just gave everything to the love of her life, her, her whole heart, her soul, the best of her, you know, everything that she is, she's so in love. And for her, her, the the object of her affection to just totally walk away or to not, and forget that, just not to respond in like kind is, oh my gosh, if it wasn't for that, there'd be no movies made in Hollywood. There's been a million movies made about unrequited love, right? Where it hasn't been re responded to. It hasn't been repaid in kind. It hasn't, the, the level of commitments are in great disparity. And whenever that happens, somebody's heart is going to get broken. Agree? Yeah. Exodus chapter 34. <coughs> God who loves his people, 
This God who supplies everything for them makes a wonderful, loving statement to these people. And he's making it to you today. In verse 12, we read, I don't have that time, it's just 34, 12. Watch yourself. Watch what? Yourself. Who's supposed to watch you? Yourself. I'm supposed to watch you? Yourself. Not me, he says what? Watch yourself. Watch yourself that you make no covenant with the inhabitants of the land into which you are going, or it will become a what? Snare. In your midst. What is going on here? Who are we talking about? Israel, right? This is when God has led his people, Israel, out of bondage, out of you know the wicked, horrid place and situation that they were in when they were in Egypt. Okay? So it's been horrific. And God is bringing them out and he's preparing their hearts. He's saying, listen, I'm going to give you a new place. But there's going to be other people in it. Right? I want, they were supposed to be, Israel was supposed to witness basically to those people and explain how wonderful Yahweh was. And to, for them to turn to this holy one God of Israel. Right? And he says, well, listen, you don't make a covenant with them. You don't unequally yoke yourself with these people. You know why? Because it's going to be a problem. You're going to have a problem if you do. They are going to become a snare. What's a snare? A trap. A trap. What does a trap do? Well, has, um, have you ever um, set a trap out so you could grab your friend and play with them? <laughs> no? Not much of a friend. So in other words, who sets traps? Yeah. Oh, so if you're caught, who are you caught by? Yeah. Oh, and do they want to play with you? No. no. What do they want to do? Yeah. Eat you, generally. <laughs> and you follow me? So when you read this, think this through. All right? God's saying, listen, when, when you see these other people, don't make a, com don't make a covenant with them. You know, don't, don't, do start doing, you know, well, don't be hanging out with them. You need to be hanging out with, with me. Because if you start hanging out with them and making a covenant, what's it going to become? It's going to become a snare in your midst, in the middle. Things in the middle generally work their way out. Look at the next verse. But rather, what are you supposed to then do? Tear down their altars, smash their sacred pillars, and cut down their ashram. You know what these things are? Okay. Altars, pillars, and ashram poles. These are all outward signs of an inward worship. Yeah, you follow me? Yeah. These people, these, these other nations that they were moving into their areas, they worship other what? Let's put it another way. They had other girlfriends. They had other girlfriends. And God's saying, you are my people. You are my possession, okay? Take this whole, you know, like, consider yourself like a miniature Israel. All right? This is, this is God's people. He absolutely, he's done everything for you. He's, he's brought you from slavery. He loves you. You, you are the, the children of the most high God. And these people over here are, uh, they, they got other girlfriends, baby. And if you start hanging out with them, what's going to happen? You are going to be tempted. Oh, man, she's hot. Wow, Ashram. Nice. The legs on that pole. <laughs> what? But rather you are to tear down their altars and smash their sacred pillars and cut down their ash, ashram for you shall not worship any other god for the Lord whose name is Jealous is a what? Jealous God. He is intolerant of rivalry. Yes? And he is very particular about guarding his possession. This is not, what I want you to see here is that this is not for him. 
He's telling His people this for them. For them. For their sake. Because He knows that they are going to get heartbroken if they walk away from their God and go whoring after other girlfriends. Follow this? And the damage that that does to them because they are they become faithless people who will be nothing but used by those faithless boyfriends. It's like this pure, sweet, this is how God sees his people. Can you know in your mind find the, the cutest, purest, most beautiful young woman, you know, with virginal qualities whose love is to this wonderful husband. You know, who she's betrothed to. The, they're, they're perfect for each other. And he has done nothing but love her and care for her. Just, and be the sweetest and respected her and given her everything. But then the bad boy comes up on the Harley, right? You know, with, with the jacket, right? You know, and it's like, yo, girlfriend, you know, can I maybe go for a ride with me? You know, take you down to Lovis Lane. And she's like, oh, I really shouldn't. You know, I really, I, I, I was raised better than that. And yeah, no, but we're only going to go, you know, kind of go for long. We're just going to go, well, he's awful cute. It's a really nice Harley. Maybe, maybe just this once. Just once. No, I won't tell you. Okay. I'll go just once. Okay, but I have to be back. Like really, I have to be back to ten. Because you know, in my, cause my boyfriend. I always meet my boyfriend at ten. Okay, so at ten o'clock, I have to be back. So okay, can, uh, is, will you make sure I'm back? Oh sure, I'll make sure you're back. So you know, goes down, takes her on a ride. Just a nice ride. Nothing, nothing heavy. Just a nice ride. Brings her back. Two minutes after 10. See, I told you I'd get you back at 10. Well, it's really two hours. No, I told you, we're back. And her boyfriend's like, well, where you been, girl? What? You know, I'm just, I was just out. You understand how this whole thing goes, right? You know, and then, and then next time, you know, next next day, he shows back up with the Harley, and he's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go back down. Well, okay, but again, you know, I really do have to be back. Well, you know, maybe once it would be okay if I was late. And off she goes. And she's having a good time. And she gets dropped off. And there's her boyfriend still waiting. And he's like, wow, now where, where have you been? You just, you look all different. Nowhere. Just, you know, what's it to me anyway? I, I can do what I want. You understand? It's getting, you know, just a little, yeah, a little less pure each time. And then this becomes such a habit that she doesn't come back. And anyway, she's down there with him in Lawler's Lane, and she's like, well, you know, he's like, well, you know, give me a kiss. Oh, no. No, I don't do that. I don't. I, I don't. Oh, okay. Well, maybe just maybe a little one on the cheek. And the first kiss is just on the cheek. And the next one, you know, she tries to get one on the cheek, but he checks his face. So it's no longer on the cheek anymore. Next thing you know, she's she's really, she's deep in it now, ain't she? And all along, <clears throat> her wonderful, faithful love of her life has sat and waited and waited and waited. And she's broken his heart. And at some point, this jealous God says, no more. No more. And Harley Boy turns out to be exactly what he is. Evil. And when she tries to come back, she realizes that she blew the love of her life. And she got caught away little by little until it was okay. And she could blow off that kind of love. For something that looked good, seemed okay, at the time felt good. But our God says, I'm a jealous God. So he says to his people, get rid of the temptations. Do not go for the ride. Amen? Amen. Isn't he a good God? Exodus 34, 13. Tear down their altars. 
smash their sacred pillars, cut down their ashram, for you shall not worship any other god. For the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous God. Otherwise, you might make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land and you would play the what? The harlot, the hooker, the whore. Oh wow, tough day at church today. <laughs> harlot, that's what that word means. That they played the harlot with their what? The boyfriends. The other boyfriends and they sacrifice, you're going to end up sacrificing to their gods and someone might invite you to eat of his sacrifice and you might take some of his daughters for your children, right? Your sons. And you're going to take, his daughters might play the harlot with their gods and cause your sons also to play the harlot with their gods. So you're going to make, don't, so don't make yourself a molten image. Are you following what he's saying? Yes. He's saying he's a father with his children. He's a husband with his bride. Okay, he's saying, listen, I love you so much. And I want to tell you, you know, like with my son, I say to my son, you going out? Okay, here's what you don't do. If they are doing this, you don't do that with them. You say, okay, I have to go now. Now, you don't sit there while they're all going, you know, uh, I don't even know, give me some evil video game. Do. Cool, thanks. It doesn't sound good, but the name alone is telling me I don't want you to say that. So if they're sitting around and playing Doom, does he just sit there and say, oh no, you guys go ahead and play it? I, I would be proud of him if he did that, right? Yeah. <laughs> right? Isn't this what's going to happen? Yeah. Why? Because it's exciting! I'm just uh, assuming, right? Like, isn't there cool music? It's got to be cool music, like, like really cool. Right? So what's going to happen after a while?
You know the old foot the door trick? Right? A salesman. Hi, oh, you want to buy some full of brushes? Does anybody sell this? They don't want to offend anybody. You want to buy it? No thanks. And you know, it's like, you try to slam the door, but their foot's in there. Literally. And, and you know, it's like the whole point is, but ma'am. You know, well, let me just show you. Just let me show you how cool it is. I got a curvy that way. <laughs> so it's a cool vacuum cleaner. You know, but I, I betrayed my... I don't like the walks. <laughs> so look, they put their foot in the door and they get you a little by little until you open the door. Okay, no, 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 no. Slam the door in their face. Whoever is coming to you to, to be, that says, like me, like me, go out with me, spend time with me instead of that old dodgy God. Read this book instead of that boring Bible, okay? Watch this program instead of hanging out with the... They're so trite. You know, it's like, why don't you do this? Do you understand what the battle is here? Yes. This is why God says, I'm telling you to move up into some mountain. It's too flat here in the mountain. It's not... I'm not telling you to, to you know, leave... What, Look, what is your sphere of influence? Demand of your own area, your own little sphere of influence that it glorifies God and it helps you to stay faithful. Does that make sense? Just demand that and you will become jealous. You will become jealous of God. Where you won't let anything, you will be the one who's jealous. My name is Pam, I'm jealous. I am intolerant of rivals. I am intolerant of those who would steal me from my God. That is what this is all about. You becoming like God. Where God is so jealous of you, where he will, he will guard you as his possession, and you, my friends, have got to fight back. You have to fight all of the suitors that are coming after your brain that are coming after your time, that are coming after your money, that are coming after your heart, that say, I need a piece of you. No, you know what? I belong to God. Amen. And that is the secret to a successful relationship. Any relationship. A marriage, a friendship, a godship, a lordship of Jesus Christ is that I belong to Him and to Him only. You ain't getting a piece of me. I tear you down. I smash your altars. I don't set them up and hope I can make it. I don't listen to junk. You know what I do with lots of emails? Delete. Delete. Oh, but a friend sent it. Delete. Delete. Oh, but it's going to be so cute. Delete. Oh, but it's my brother and we never talk. That's right. Delete. <laughs> you understand? But no, I really should listen. I should allow them. No. And then... No, no, no. Some things, you know what? God says, tear them down. Tear them down. Keep them away from your brain. You don't, you're not supposed to be stupid strong. You're supposed to be smart strong. And there's a big difference here. Otherwise, we end up playing the harlot. Intimacy depends on oneness. And oneness takes a commitment. Doesn't it? Yes. A commitment. And that's what God wants. He wants a commitment from you. To love him with his whole heart. He wants a commitment that you will pray every day. And a lot of it. God wants a commitment from you that you will read your Bible every day. He ain't asking for much. Just everything. Just everything. Matthew 13. Look, God's done his job. Don't we agree? God's loved you, man. He's loved you with everything. Matthew 13. We need, we cannot afford to get complacent. Because complacency is, well, oh, it's okay. The thing that God was saying to his people was when you go in, when you leave Egypt and you go in and you're going to get, you know, you're going to get used to living in a town you didn't build and living in this nice house. You know, because I've given you everything. You're going to be 
somebody had, you know, had a, a vineyard, eating from a vineyard, you didn't even plant, you know, because I'm driving out the adulterous nations before you, and these are going to be your homes. And he's like, don't forget me. Here's the temptation. You're going to forget. You ever notice that the farther from a crisis you get, the less motivated you are to change? People every day is crisis. Stay in a crisis mentality so that you don't become complacent and forget where you came from and forget who your God is. We have to stay sharp because a threat, if you don't recognize what is a threat to your oneness with God, what is a threat to your holiness, which without, you can't even see God without that holiness, if you don't recognize it as a threat, then you cannot fight it. Agreed? So Matthew 13, Jesus does this. He's pretty smart. Matthew 13, verse 15. For the heart of this people has become dull. With their ears they scarcely hear, and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise they would see with their eyes, hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and do what? And I would heal them. But blessed are your eyes, because they see. And blessed are your ears, because they hear. Where and when you and I have become dull and complacent, that's where we must return to the Lord. And say, I'm sorry, God, I went for a ride. He was cute. The Harley was tempting. You understand? TV was... On. The Bible wasn't next to me. Something else was. So, you whatever your issue is that starts to pull you away from the Almighty is what you need to deal with. Isaiah 54, I'd like to close in this verse. Because my goal is that we get to the place that God is our love. The love of our life, where we can't wait to get on the phone with God. Where we can't get off the phone. Well, you say goodbye first, God. No, no, I'm, you say goodbye. God's never going to say goodbye to you. He's going to want to stay with you all the time. You know, this is the kind of relationship with your God where you're sending an anniversary card. You know, happy first anniversary, God. Happy 15. You get a silver going. You get a gold anniversary. Uh, the millennium cards are a little hard to find, but you know, you send them a happy millennium. In other words, there's an eternity with you and your husband. Fear not, for you will not be put to shame. And do not feel humiliated, for you will not be disgraced, but you will forget the shame of your youth. Amen. And the reproach of your widowhood you will remember no more. For your husband is your maker. Whose name is the Lord of hosts. And your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. Who is called the God of all the earth. Isn't that beautiful? That's who your husband. That's the relationship. This tightness. This faithful, committed love. That's what God wants from us, because He has certainly given it to you. Father, we're grateful that you love us with such a love. Lord, Jesus taught us to pray to lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. Father, help us to recognize exactly that, to recognize what is temptation and to tear it down, smash it up, get it out of the way. Especially, Lord, with this time of year coming where things tempt us, to steal our money, our time, and our love. Father, we ask that you could purify our hearts and keep us holy. For we are prone to wander, we are prone to leave you, but we don't want to. We want to stay so connected to you. Through the body of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen.